Welcome to another installment of my High Yield Video Question Bank series. If you're joining us for the first time, this is the video series where I am creating a question bank, but in video format. Now, the goal of this series is to expose you to very high yield, third order challenging questions that train your brain to recognize high yield patterns and to problem solve so that when you actually sit for USMLE or Comlex, you've already seen these types of questions before and therefore it becomes second nature for you to think like somebody who's not trying to necessarily get the answer right, but think like somebody who's trying to solve a puzzle and that is how you do well on these tests. Before I get into today's video, please remember to click the subscribe button for my channel. The more subscribers that I have, the higher my videos will be ranked on YouTube, which means the more that medical students and other graduate health professionals will have free access to premium content. Let's get into today's video. An 18 year old male presents to the emergency department complaining of headache and confusion. He reports generalized headache, which is dull and resistant to over-the-counter ibuprofen. He states, quote, every time I look at light, it hurts, end quote. He reports feeling stiffness on the back of his neck. On exam, you note a temperature of 102 degrees Fahrenheit, a blood pressure of 100 over 68, a heart rate of 106, and a respiratory rate of 22. There is no nasal discharge. When the patient is supine, passive flexion at the neck does not elicit involuntary knee flexion. Part one of three. So I've got a three-parter. This is technically three different questions. Which of the following is the correct diagnosis? A, meningitis. B, migraine. C, cluster headache. D, sinusitis. Or E, malingering. Pause the video if you want to think about it. And if you're ready, I'm going to give you the first answer. So the diagnosis here is meningitis. Now, let's look at the different parts of the clinical vignette and highlight in red what's really important to get this diagnosis correct. So the patient complains of a headache and confusion. Every time he looks at light, it hurts. That's also known as photophobia. There's stiffness on the posterior aspect of his neck, and he's got a pretty significant fever of 102. So the answer here is meningitis. Um, what a lot of you are probably saying, and you're saying so incorrectly, is you're going dirty. The last sentence of your question said that when the patient was supine, passive flexion at the neck didn't elicit involuntary knee flexion. So it's not meningitis. And if that is what you're thinking, you are such a cute little medical student. Oh God, you guys absolutely adorable. So that, that description is referring to Brzezinski sign. And Brzezinski sign, for those of you who didn't know what the question was describing, is in somebody who has meningitis, this sign can be part of the vignette. So, so how it works is the physician passively flexes the patient's neck. And then that passive flexion of the neck causes an involuntary knee flexion at the knee. This is a sign of meningismus and it sometimes tells you that the patient has meningitis. Now, let's get back to the cute little med student thought here, is that you're saying, but Brzezinski sign is negative, so it can't be migraine, and you would just be plainly incorrect. The absence of Brzezinski sign, and also the absence of Koenig sign, which is another sign that tells you about meningismus, does not definitively exclude meningitis. In fact, if you go on PubMed, you will notice that Many studies, many prospective studies have found that the sensitivity for these signs is somewhere between 2 and 43%. So just because you've got a negative Brzezinski or a negative Koenig in the clinical vignette doesn't necessarily rule out meningitis. So let's go back to the question and see why the other answer choices could not possibly be correct. So for choice B, migraine, the patient's got a fever. Okay, there's no fever associated with migraine. Even though this patient has photophobia and headache, mm, you know, neck stiffness and fever really points you in the direction of meningitis. So B is clearly not right. What about C, cluster headache? So cluster headaches will appear the exact same way every single question, USMLE step one, step two, and step three. It doesn't matter what, what test you're taking, a cluster headache is going to be a male patient with a unilateral, sharp, 10 out of 10 
headache that the patient experiences somewhere around the eye. There will probably be associated um, lacrimation or tearing, and there can be some autonomic instability. They'll give you some BS about treating it with oxygen or prophylaxing against it with a calcium channel blocker, but that presentation is 100% of the time how they're going to give you a cluster headache. Now look at this question. Does that seem to be what they're giving you? And the answer is no. So it's not cluster headache. Sinusitis. Well, could it be sinusitis? You could have a fever in sinusitis. You could have a headache in sinusitis, but there's no nasal discharge. So as soon as you see that effectively rule out sinusitis, it's not sinusitis. And then E, malingering. Well, you know, to, to prove that it's malingering, you'd have to do a little bit more than this. But because the patient has a temperature of 102 degrees and all of the other hallmark symptoms of, of meningitis, it's probably not malingering. So the best answer choice here is meningitis, even though Brzezinski sign is negative. So that's why I wrote part one of this question. It was to make you remember that just because you don't have a Brzezinski sign or you don't have a Koenig, you shouldn't walk away from meningitis and say it's got to be something else. That is not true. Let's move on to part two. Which of the following is the most likely causative pathogen? A, group B strep. B, N, meningitis. C, H, influenza type B. D, E. coli. Or E, strep pneumoniae. Pause the video if you want some time to think about this before I give you the answer. All right, so the answer here is strep pneumonia. And what you really need to think about when you have these questions that are asking you, what is the most likely causative pathogen? Well, the most likely causative pathogen is the thing that causes the most meningitis. And regardless of age range and regardless of all that stuff, the most likely causative pathogen in meningitis is strep pneumonia. Any test that you take, if they want the most likely causative pathogen, you pick the thing that causes that disease the most, okay? So some people, they think about that incorrectly and they go, well, you know, he's 18, maybe he's a college student and therefore maybe I would choose Neisseria meningitidis. And while the way that you're thinking is a really good way to think because you understand the association between the Neisseria subtype of meningitis and the college risk factor, in general, the most likely causative pathogen is the thing that causes meningitis the most, and that's E, strep pneumonia. So that's why I wrote part two. Part three, a sample of cerebrospinal fluid is obtained. Which of the following results are most likely? I'm not going to read these to you because it's up down arrows. So pause the video, look at A, B, C, D, and E, and then pause the video if you want some time to think about it. All right, I'm going to give you the answer. So pause the video now if you need more time. But the correct answer here is A. Opening pressure will be up, protein will be up, and glucose will be down. So in bacterial meningitis, this is the pattern of CSF that you're going to see. And if you're trying to conceptualize a way to think about this, the way that I used to think about this back in the day, which you know scientifically may not be correct, but makes sense if you're reasoning through this, is opening pressure is obviously going to be elevated. You just have to assume that that's the case in meningitis because in all meningitis, whether it's bacterial, whether it's fungal or tubercular or viral, it's going to be increased. Now, sometimes viral can be normal, but usually it's always increased. And the protein is going to be increased, right? You've got a lot of bacterial float a lot of bacteria, excuse me, floating around in the CSF. And what is inside of bacteria? Proteins. Okay, so a lot of protein in there. And then all of that bacteria is soaking up and utilizing glucose. So glucose is going to be down. That's how I remember it. And again, scientifically, that's not necessarily accurate, but that's an easy way to conceptualize what's happening with bacteria. A lot of stuff floating around. So there's a lot of protein. All the bacteria is feeding off all the glucose to you know multiply and keep that infection going. So glucose will be down and your opening pressure is almost uniformly increased regardless of the type of meningitis. Again, the little exception there is sometimes viral meningitis has a normal opening pressure, but bacterial, fungal, TB is always increased. So that's it for today's video. This was a three-parter, a little nitpicky because I threw a curveball at you, giving you a negative Brzezinski, and I threw another curveball at you, asking you for the most likely causative pathogen, not specific to any age range. 
Um, but that's it for today's video. And I hope that you keep these things in the back of your mind because I've seen a lot of questions and I, I, I definitely can attest to the fact that test writers love to go after these little nuances. If you liked this video, please remember to subscribe to my channel, drop a comment, give me a thumbs up, anything that you can do to just prop up my videos so that more medical students and more graduate health professionals can get a hold of premium education. Remember also that if you're, want a, uh, if you're looking for a way to support Dirty Medicine, you like my channel, you like the content that I make, and you want to support the channel, you can click my Patreon link. That link will be in the description of every video on my channel. Sign up to support the channel financially. Love you. Good luck.